the thermal time switch, it controls your cold start injector. Testing this, if you touch ground on one side of your multimeter and take and check for continuity, you should find one that is cold, it will be grounded, and the other one will have a resisted signal. The resisted signal is the heater which opens and closes the switch and denies the ground to the cold start injector. So this is the grounding point for the cold start. Above a specific temperature, and it is written on the side of this one, this one here says that it is 19.5 degrees Celsius, nine and a half seconds. So at 19 and a half degrees Celsius, this will stay on for nine and a half seconds. Well, don't believe it, they don't. I've tested these things clear down, froze them to zero, and then energize them to see how long they stay on. If you get one to stay on for three seconds, you've really got an active uh, auxiliary, uh, cylinder head, an active thermal time switch. The cylinder head temperature switch, on the other hand, has a, f has a fixed limit of thermistor uh, resistance in it. it. Cold it will read one thing, hot it will read the other. So it's important that you compare the ambient temperature that the, that the unit is, is at in order to compare it to what it should read. These generally don't give a whole lot of trouble. I wouldn't look for this to be a, a big trouble area, but again, bad contacts here can mean a world of problems. I don't know if you can see inside of this one, but it is rusted and corroded and it is turned green from water leakage and the thermostat housing had been leaking from where the thermostat had been improperly replaced and a lot of fuel injection problems come from just sloppy maintenance of, of cooling systems where the water drips down in here and corrodes these contacts and then that ends your, this, this little guy right here is the brains of the whole outfit. The cylinder head temperature switch has more to say about the total overall change in mixture in this fuel injection system in these early systems than any other component in it, short of fuel pressure. If you have an oxygen sensor, it works in, in conjunction with the cylinder head temperature switch, but it can correct and trim whatever this works with, and it can react more quickly to hot and cold than does the oxygen sensor, which only works after the engine warms up because it takes heat from the exhaust to make it work. So it does take both of them to make the system function for those of you in the ZXs that have an oxygen sensor. Again, if the oxygen sen the early ZXs and the 280s did not have oxygen sensors until about 1980, so you, you folks with 79s can ignore that. You won't be finding an oxygen sensor plugged into your manifold. You'll see a hole for it, or maybe a block plug, but it, will, it won't be there. What, what years have uh, NOx sensors screwed into the head? At the cylinder head temperature switch? Okay, I, I thought it was called a NOx sensor. No, the NOx sensor is only on the turbos. Okay, so what people are calling an NOx sensor screwed into the head over there on the back side is actually a cylinder head temperature switch? That's a cylinder head temperature switch. Okay. Yeah, and that's the one that rotates freely. Right. Um, if you happen to be retrofitting a later model motor that has the cylinder head temperature switch located on the spark plug side, it'll be necessary for you to take and retain your thermostat housing from your old motor. I guess a good rule of thumb here would be to keep everything except the long block that came with your car and then be very careful that all the other components, oil pan, oil pan pickup, etc., damper pulleys, all are the same. But uh, that's another whole video. <laughs>